Welcome to Micro Terrors. Scary stories for kids. Where it's always the spooky season. Full of chills. Thrills. And spine tingling spooks. Micro Terrors are family friendly frights for those ages 8 and up. And while our stories are for younger ears, we are still talking about things that go bump in the night. And some children may not be able to handle what others can. Parental consent is recommended. Now, for tonight's Micro Terror. Return of the Space Monster Denny's alarm rang tearing him away from his dream. The same dream he had almost every single night since it first happened, since the space monster invasion in his backyard. It had been nearly five months since the implausible incident, but because of the frequent dreams where he would relive the science fiction madness, it always felt like it was just yesterday. Danny, don't you dare hit snooze on that alarm! His mom called up from downstairs. I won't! Denny called back down, already knowing it was a school day. He hated it when his mom would tell him things he already knew. It was like she never even gave him a chance, just like with the story he tried to tell about the space monster. She didn't believe him. Neither did his dad. He was just too focused on and furious about his precious shed being destroyed during the alleged incident. He still grumbled about it to this day. Denny got dressed and rushed downstairs for breakfast. He could smell it from his bedroom. Bacon, extra greasy he had hooked, scrambled eggs, and toast with jelly. He licked his chops as he turned the corner into the kitchen. It sat there in all its breakfasty glory, a world-class morning meal. But instead of a cold glass of orange juice, or heck, even a coffee, there was a glass of his mom's famous lemonade. The whole family raved about it, as did Denny's friends who made frequent appearances at the house. Denny didn't get it. To him, it tasted like poison, and it was store-bought at that. It was time to make a stand about the lemonade. He'd leave it there all day, right there on the kitchen table next to his empty breakfast plate. It would become warm, and all the pulp would sink to the bottom of the glass. Hey, that'll show her, he laughed. When school ended, Danny rode the bus home. He and his friends, Randy and Kit, got off just down the street from Denny's house and all walked there as was tradition. They got together every day after school at Denny's house, did a little bit of homework, and then played until Denny's parents got home. Homework should be illegal, Kit said. That way we can send the teachers to prison for assigning it. That seems a little harsh, Randy said, closing his three-ringed binder. Who's ready to play? Should we play swords or nerf guns? Denny asked. I've been waiting for months for my dad to replace the batteries in my laser tag guns, so those are obviously out. Swords for sure, Kit said. Just then, the lights in the house flickered and a sonic boom exploded outside. What on earth was that? Kit exclaimed. Without warning, a giant chrome egg-shaped thing crashed through the ceiling and crushed the TV and decorated end tables next to the couch. Glass, smoke, feathers, and doilies spun through the living room as if a tornado had touched down. Randy, Kit, and Denny all instinctively jumped out of the way and rushed into the kitchen where they took cover. Denny peered back into the living room. As the smoke and sparks settled, the chrome egg thing split in half emitting a green vapor from inside. Through the vapor, Denny saw something writhing. They were arms, six of them long and slimy like those of an octopus. The arms slapped down onto the carpet and the ferocious beast inside pulled itself out. It had a long neck, an equally long tail, two goopy eyes, and a mouth filled with sharp teeth. The beast shrieked, sending a steady stream of saliva across the room and splattering on Denny's face before he had a chance to duck back around the corner. 
Space Monster! Kit screamed. It can't be! Brandy screamed over the deafening roars of the alien creature. We killed that thing months ago! Denny knew it wasn't over. The dreams were all leading to this. The Space Monster's return. It was back to take revenge. We have to get out of here! Denny yelled, wiping the translucent goo from his face. He stood to his feet and tried to think of their next move. The back door! Kit yelled. The knob is broken! Denny said. My dad hasn't fixed it yet! The space monster shot through the living room, slamming all six of its arms into the door frame that led into the kitchen. The drywall crumbled, covering the kids in white dust. Randy grabbed a butter knife from the dish drain and charged the monster. He slammed it down into one of its legs, but that only enraged the beast more. It slapped Randy with one of its arms, knocking him to the floor. Kit tried next. He picked up a chair from around the kitchen table and repeatedly thrust it at the monster like he was a lion tamer at a world-class circus. The beast smacked the chair out of Kit's hand and wrapped one of its arms around him like an anaconda. Kit pounded his fists down on the slimy arm, screaming for help. It was all up to Denny now. He tore the house phone out of the wall and threw it at the monster, but it barely made a dent. He grabbed the entire knife block from the counter and threw each knife in quick succession. Nothing. The space monster hissed and shrieked again, teasing the idea of eating Kit by bringing him closer to its mouth. Denny grabbed his empty breakfast plate from the table and tossed it like a frisbee. It smacked the creature in one of its eyes with a loud squelch. Denny next grabbed the glass of warm lemonade and heaved it directly into the mouth of the beast. It clamped its jaws shut and began to gurgle. Its eyes became softer and then leaked out of its head, plopping to the floor like freshly cracked eggs. It dropped Kit, who scurried as far away as possible, and then, from deep within, the creature burst. Guts, slime, and gooey nastiness rained down in the kitchen, covering the kids from head to toe. They all three stood there in disbelief that this had happened to them again. The sticky guts dripped from the ceiling like rain pittering on the floor. The monster's mushy remains continued to liquefy, eventually evaporating until there was nothing left. Randy looked to Denny, wide-eyed. What was in that glass? Poison or something? Thank you for listening to Micro Terrors. Join us each Saturday for another scary story. For more fun, visit our website at microterrors.com, where we will also have spooky games you can print out and play, like wicked word searches, mysterious mazes, and more. Microterrors.com is also where you can find us on your favorite social media and even send in your own scary story for us to tell. Plus, you'll learn more about our author, Scott Donnelly, who has other horrors for both young and old. I hope you'll join me again soon for Micro Terrors, Scary Stories for Kids.